Hello, and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. How are you? How are you today? Oh, good. You know what? A heat wave. It might break 30 today. Uh huh. I'm still a little cold, but I'll, it's almost 40. You know what? Though this this feels super warm yeah. compared to what we've had. Not too long ago, we did a tree identification. That's we were right. Out in the woods. Well, it was a lot warmer than it is today. Now, in a little while, you're going to see a bunch of snow. We're on the porch up here, mm -hmm. and we've actually got a cowboy cooking recipe we're going to share with you today that has to do with syrup. Hmm. All right, let me ask you something, Mrs. Farmer. Yes. That's one jug, one gallon. How many gallons, if it was nothing but sugar maples, and, and the sugar content was high in the sap, okay. how many gallons of sap would it take to make that one gallon? 50 million. Two. I don't know. I have no idea. That's a good guess. <laughs> 50 million or two? 10. 40. Wow. That's if the sugar content is high. Right. If you have red maples, that will work. Silver okay. maples. But the sugar ratio is a little bit lower, so it might take 50. Wow. So on and so forth. Now, I have got some maples here. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Right. Other species that people tap to get sap. Somebody the other day mentioned in Denmark, and we'll have to look this up to make sure, but they use birch trees predominantly. Really? And in different parts of the country where there are no maples, mm -hmm. they might use that. Now, there's going to be some conversation today, a lot of talk, because we're going to show you how to do some things. But the first thing we have to do is identify the tree. Later on, we're going to show you how to build some things that we got, hang them on the tree, show you how to tap the tree and collect the sap. But first, you have to identify the tree. Let's bring out a quick segment real quick, show you how to identify and mark a tree. Now, I just took some red paint. You can do whatever you want. You can hang a little tag on yeah. it. But to me, I want to be able to look in the woods like I'm looking right now, and I see 60 yards out there. There's a tree, and I see another one right over there. I want to see it from a distance. Now, it's not going to hurt that tree. Right. It's a little bit of paint on the outside. So let's learn how to identify, mark, and then we'll come back to this. All right, let's look at some maple leaves. Let's look at this branch right here. And look how they're individually coming out. You see that? Yeah. And look, there's three main veins here. Now here's your oak leaf. Now there are white oaks and red oaks. You can see the obvious difference there. Now, when I'm talking about 10 inches, I'm talking about circumference through the tree. Yeah. So, obviously, these, now, that's that's 9 inches right there. Oh, yeah. So, these are well beyond, obviously. And I'm going to mainly use mature trees. There's not going to be any doubt with what we're doing. So, I'm going to go ahead and mark these. So, we're going to know that these are trees we're going to use. Just that simple. We don't even measure that. All right, let's find another one. Okay, now, you didn't know a maple tree before. Right. From an oak. That's right. You didn't pay attention. From sassafras, whatever. All right, look up. What do you think this is? It's a maple. See how quickly? I learned. See how quickly you You learned? made me look at the leaves. And we know, obviously, this is a big enough tree. So with inside of that, so we can all see them on the same side. All right, now that you got the eye for it, find me another one. Straight across. Yeah. Look, look around. You see any more? They're everywhere. Right there. So, being that we're right in this area, if you have a lot of tubing, think about this, Mickey. If we get a little more tubing and we have a big bucket down here low, right? we can just buy extra half inch tubing, okay. run those three here, run this one here, run that one here, and they can all go into one collective bucket. I like it's that. It's a lot of tubing, yeah. but, but if you find a bunch in one area, why not? So, let's find some more and let's mark some more. Ooh, I see another one up there. All right, let's go down here. So what I'm thinking is the reality of the situation is we don't use a whole lot of syrup. We can start eating more pancakes. And you like your waffles every day. <laughs> but if you're making it yourself, you gotta have and it's it. natural and it's real, you, you know where it came from. So I'm thinking the little tiny bottles okay. as opposed to doing it a gallon at a time. So let's do a quarter at a time and store it. And this thing has a long shelf life. Right. But as we collect this, that's the only ingredient. There's no additions. Really? That's it. You boil it down. So you take this, we'll build a fire outside. We'll find us an old kettle and we'll cook this stuff down. You skim off the top, kind of mm -hmm. the bitter stuff as you go right. along. And it reduces down like anything with sugar. Really? It reduces down, reduces down until it gets the right color and the right thickness. You pour it off, 
Let's get a spoon Boom. and eat it. Pancakes. There you go. So, we'll be back to follow up on this. And I'm telling you what, in a very, very, very short amount of time, 30, 40 trees, bam. Right. So, we got maple trees. Right. That's cool. Mm -hmm. The next step is to go out and tap them and so on and so forth. But other trees that people have tapped before, I've heard people talk about sycamores, but black really? walnut. Hmm. I've also had people tell me about taking shagbark hickory and taking it and boiling it. You can get a type of syrup really? out of the bark there. Now let's talk about where I got this stuff from. I got this from River Ridge Products. They're out of Wisconsin. And here's basically what it looks like. Let's just go ahead and build one, Nikki. Okay. We have our receptacle here, which is a heavy duty, food grade plastic bag. And I like dealing with these because they're right on the tree, attached right. to the tree. There's not a lot that can go wrong with tubing, so on and so forth. And we're doing it on such a small scale that why not? Okay. All right, now what we're gonna do is go up to the top of this thing. We're gonna gather all that around the top. The top. We're gonna take a zip tie. You see where this is, Nikki, right uh -huh. here? We're gonna put that together and then pull out as tight as we can in that groove. Now, this, see, this is really simple. Yeah, it is simple. Get that as tight as we possibly can. There's a little groove here that, that fits right into. Simply gonna cut this off. Now, what that does is make this tight so nothing can get in there. Now, we're gonna take this and fold it down. And I researched this carefully and looked at a lot of stuff. These are rather inexpensive. I think for a kit of 10 of these, it's like 50, 60 bucks, also, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Now, again, make sure your clear side is out. Another zip tie to go over that. And you see what we got? Very see nice. how that works? And you put the little top on? Now, there's a little top that goes on to keep anything from going okay. in. And here's your tab. Heavy duty plastic. Okay. This long end goes in. Now, something else we're going to do is we're going to take, over the years, they figured out that a 5 16th bit is about what you need. They used to do 7 16 but 5 16 seems to be the right gauge. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to go in at a slight angle into the tree. And I've got this marked with a piece of tape to go an inch and a half. Okay, you're smart. Now what you're going to do, you knock a little bit of that bark off so uh -huh. you have a flat surface. You're going to make sure that the wood is not rotted underneath. When you drill in, you want to make sure that that wood is blonde. Okay. It's light colored. If it's dark, that means there's some decay. You don't want that. Here's what you're looking for weather-wise. Right now, temperatures are starting to raise. Mm -hmm. It's the end of January. What happens at the end of January? These trees start producing sap to feed the buds in the top of the tree. When you look at your trees to tap, you want something that has a lot of canopy. That means there's a lot of buds. Right. So that means it's gonna be pushing a lot of sap up to feed those buds. Okay. Because in, in the spring, it gets green and you have beautiful right. foliage because it's well fed. Now, how much sap comes out of a tree? You might be surprised. If it's really flowing good, we could fill one of these bags up. These are three gallon bags. Okay. We could fill one of these bags up. The thing about this sap is it doesn't have a long shelf life. Okay. Guess what the shelf life is? A couple of know. days. Oh, really? If you start letting it go much longer than that, it's gonna have a kind of a bitter smell to it and your syrup's not gonna be any good. So you gotta check it every day? You've gotta check it every day. And the more trees we can get to get to that process, right. the, the better off we'll be. We're doing a small batch. Okay, 40 to one ratio. If wow. we had 40 gallons, we'd get one gallon. I wouldn't need a gallon of syrup in a year. But everybody wants them. I've had a lot of requests, so you're going to have to Shh, produce. Don't tell anybody we're doing this. I'll never know. <laughs> I told them they all get a bottle like this. <laughs> so I'm shooting for a quart. Okay. So let's think about that. If we get 10 gallons, I'm probably shooting for a little higher than that because I don't know our sugar content. Right. That's something we're going to talk about later. But we'll shoot for 10, 12 gallons. And we're going to pour that down little by little. And okay. we can do this as we're boiling it down. You don't want to get above 216 degrees. I don't want to get too much into the temperatures and all that stuff. Right. Now, that's another step. But you can keep adding to that pot as it's reducing. So if you've got a, if you've got a three gallon pot and it reduces down to a gallon, then you can keep bringing in fresh sap and reducing hmm. that down. Okay. So our goal now is to get some sap. See our marks, there's one over there, one over there. Let me see, I got some hung over there. But, you know, you want it to be four or five feet tall where you can get to it. Now, again, I'm going to go at a slight angle. See how nice yeah. that wood is in there? Inch and a half. That 
is, I see moisture already. Oh, it is starting to drip out. Uh huh. Now, that's good. That was not doing that oh, yesterday. Look, it's coming okay. out. <laughs> this is not, this is making me very happy. So, now what we're going to do, this was not happening yesterday, believe you me. Because it's 40 degrees. Yeah. This is on the southwest side of this tree. So, as you can see, these trees are going. They're ready to ready, go. Ready, yeah. Now, this one warm day, the other day when I was doing this, the temperature was way down there. So, you can see that this tree is ready to go. That makes me very happy. Now, the next step is to simply put this on here and turn it. There it is. Perfect. Now, as you can see, that's kind of protected from the dirt and the dust and whatever might get in there. All right, how about that? Look at that, Mrs. Farmer. Wow. Look at that drip. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Now, one thing I found out that I like about these bags, now some people use milk jugs, some people use five gallon buckets with tubing, so on and so forth. I can stand up on that hill there and I can see 11 bags over here and I can see exactly how much is in each bag. So this is a three gallon bag. That's, that's unbelievable, from a day? Know, that's almost two gallons right there. I can look over there and say, there's a gallon, there's two gallons. So I can say, in this little stand of woods here, I got 10 gallons. You just hung this yesterday. This just was yesterday. just hung yesterday. Is that that's not unbelievable. Cool? So that's the one thing I really like about these particular bags. What we want to do is show you how to do this on your own property on a limited scale. We're not going to try to make 60 gallons of syrup. We're going to try to make a couple quarts. So no presents this year? Just no for presents, okay. unless they're like in thimbles. <laughs> but we don't need a whole lot of... of uh, syrup, but we did a very small batch the other day and it ended up really good. It was good. Now we did kind of two control batches and what we found out is if you go too long you're going to end up with candy. Yeah, and you like it's that good. too. It's good. I mean it's candy. sugar and you can kind of break that up and it's yeah. almost like brown sugar. So they did different things back in the day. Some people wanted the sugar, some people, and you can carry that with you and use it for a natural sweetener or you can make syrup. Now here's the thing about syrup that you buy in the store and they got us the other day all natural maple syrup. Mm -hmm. We get home and look at it, the all natural is all natural corn syrup, all natural brown sugar, all natural, duh. Yeah. There is no syrup in it. Maple extract, almond extract, sometimes some vanilla extract, whatever. If you go to buy maple syrup, pure maple syrup, mm -hmm. you know what the ingredients are? 100% maple syrup. Sap. Boiled down, reduced into syrup. We want to make this as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. When we do this boil down process, it's a fairly long process. So we're going to take this, dump it down, and we're going to cook it over propane. You can do it a small batch on your stove. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that too much. You're going to have a sticky, sugary substance that will get on your ceiling and walls. You don't want that if you're going to do a lot. But you can do a small batch in your house if you want to get like two cups, yeah. so on and so forth. So let's gather some of this. This okay. is, again, one day. Jeez. So let's gather the big bags, take them to the cabin where it's nice and cool, set those inside, and we'll boil it down the next couple days. All right. Is that not cool? It is neat. We've got our syrup, we gathered it up, we brought it up here, and now we're gonna take just the straight bags mm -hmm. and we're gonna take a piece of cheesecloth and just do a kind of a an early filter. Right. Put some cheesecloth over that and pour it directly into a pan and get that going. So now the old smokehouse over here has turned out to have more than one use. You take your turkey cooker, the base of it. That's right. Put it in there, crank it up. Fit perfect. It fit perfect. <laughs> so we take a, a food service tray, I mm -hmm. guess you would call it, that you right. use in your catering, so on and so forth. You set that in there. So anyhow, we're going to pour that off and get it to a boil. We got four gallons there. When it gets seven degrees above when it starts to boil, we 
was 209 degrees here right. when it started to boil. What we're going to do, we're going to go from a bigger pan to a smaller pan to a smaller pan. I want to keep that at about two inches in the bottom. Okay. And it gets sweeter and sweeter, right? It gets sweeter and sweeter. sweeter. You know how we did yes. it the other day. So at 216 at the end, when we know we're about there, we pour it off and we got syrup. Granny's cook stove. I remember Granny's cook stove and the warmth it used to bring, the kettle come to boiling, and the song it used to sing, the smell of biscuits baking, hearty vegetables in a stew, from the garden Granddad planted and then tended as it grew. There were fruit-filled pies and cobblers from the orchard on the hill, tasty golden crusted cornbread made from corn ground at the mill. Quite often on a Sunday, company would come to call, and the smell of chicken frying would come drifting through the hall. The women in the kitchen all helped Granny around the stove, while men folk gathered on the porch, children scampered to the grove. Winter, chilly mornings made it hard to face the day until Granny lit the cook stove and got breakfast on the way. As the ice and snows have melted, so too have passed the years. Granddad is gone and so is Granny. Meditation brings quiet tears. Still, I treasure every memory and to happy thoughts I cling as I remember Granny's cook stove and the warmth it used to bring. Cowboy cooking. Yay! It's been a long time because of rain, because of mud, because cameras. I'm a little cold, but this is not bad. No, this actually. feels like a heat wave compared yeah. to what we've had. Because we're in the syrup mood. That's right. And it's, this is a themed show. Pure maple syrup. Did you ever look at the price of pure maple syrup when you go to buy it? It's pretty expensive. Yes, it is. And there's a reason. Now, it's a long, drawn out process. It's not for the faint of heart, and you got to have trees. Right. That helps. And patience. And patience. <laughs> but we do have a recipe today. We're going to start breaking this up into groups and different degrees of hardship involved in cooking. Okay. If it's really easy, it's gonna be a sh pop tender plate. I like easy and quick. That's gonna be <laughs> a one. Okay. On the scale of difficulty. Number two is gonna be sh cow poke. Okay. All right, that's a, that's a medium degree of difficulty. If it's long and drawn out and got a lot of steps, it's gonna be three and that's gonna be your ranger. Okay, wow. All right, that's our three steps. One, two, and three. Today. It's as easy as it can get. Yes, it is. This is a one. This is for the tenderfoot. Now, why do we always use the briquettes? There's a reason for that. When we're doing it ourselves and we're out here and we got friends over, right. we're just taking, we got a big fire going and we're taking coals out and putting it right on the bucket. That's for, that's for the ranger and that's for the guy who's been out here doing it for a while. For you folks who are just starting, we want to give you an idea how to eyeball it and we're going to have 400 degrees today. Do you have any idea, Mrs. Farmer? How many on the bottom, how many on the top? 714. Close. 612. 17 and 8. Oh, really? Okay. 17 and 8. 400 degrees. Okay, so 400. To, I'm off. Okay. To 350. But what we're going to do is we've got these going over here. We're going to take these and put them on the bottom. The recipe is so simple. Now, right. we had a syrup that we used to trick Nanny into eating carrots. That's right. So, this secret syrup that we used to trick Nanny That's right. is basically maple syrup some brown sugar and butter. Because she didn't like just carrots, but you called it caroots. Caroots. <laughs> she, hates, she hates carrots. But she loves but caroots. Suddenly when we made that syrupy mix of butter, brown sugar, and maple syrup. Caroots. The caroots were good. You could put that on shoe leather and eat it. I know. That. It's delicious. So here's what we're going to do. You're in a hurry. you got to go tap your trees, feed your pigs. Right. Or ride the mayor to town to get you some flour. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you got to do quick and easy. It's going to take about 20 minutes. Tell us what we're going to do, Ms. Farmer, that's absolutely delicious here. This is so simple, and it's kind of a breakfast, but I guess you could have it for a snack, and it just involves biscuits. When so you don't have time to make your own dough? That's right. Just get a container of biscuits, and they're pretty cheap. You get a four-pack for hardly mm -hmm. anything. So we're going to take some biscuits, and we're going to open those up, put those in the pan, and we're going to let those, let's let those cook a little bit. Let yeah. them rise up a little bit. Little yeah. And then we're going to bring them back. We're going to pour, I think we have about three tablespoons of butter here. And we're going to melt the butter, pour that over the top. And then I have some maple syrup. I'd say about, let's go a quarter cup of maple syrup. Just pour it on there. And a quarter, we have a half a cup of brown sugar. So let's go a quarter cup 
sprinkled on that, add our bacon that I've already crisped up, and that's actually one pound of bacon that I made and cut up into little pieces. Sprinkle that on, and then we'll put a little more of the syrup, another quarter cup of the syrup, and then the rest of the brown sugar, another quarter cup. It's stupid good. It's good. It's, and it's so easy. It's sweet. Say that's ridiculous. It's ridiculously easy. It tastes like, oh my goodness. The sugar with the salt, the bacon makes it really good. That's really, that's a good breakfast. Wow. That's really good. It's ridiculously easy and it's wonderfully tasty. Hmm. I wouldn't eat it every day, but today we're working hard, you know, we're tapping trees and stuff. Mm. Mm. Yum. Mm. Mm. That was so easy. If you don't have time, Boom, you plop a bunch of biscuits in, you don't even have to mix up your oh, dough. I love the so bacon. Oh, I just want to yeah. eat all the bacon the off bacon the top. The bacon kind of candied oh, into that. Yes. Oh. Mm. Now that was one of our easiest recipes we've ever done. We've got more complicated stuff and anything from lamb to lizard. But if you need something sweet and you're starving right now and you got bacon and muff and biscuits, you're Boom. good. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yum. And we treat if you want to put that in your uh, carrots, you can turn them into carrots. That's right. Get the vegetables <laughs> to the grandkids. That's right. You know what, if you uh, like this recipe. We've got 850 gazillion more out That's there. That's a lot. Where are they? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Where? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. You're kidding me. No, I'm serious. Recipes, how-tos, gazillions of videos on things we've right. done, like building a smokehouse, mm -hmm. tapping trees. Also, if you're on there, click subscribe. That way, when a new video comes out, boom, you know right. about it. And since everybody's doing this Facebook thing nowadays, if you want to be our Facebook friend, how would you do that, Miss Farmer? Just go on there and hit like like that's all you got to do and you're on our facebook page we talk to people from all over the world on there and now as the wind starts to blow it's all about good times good friends and good eats i'm gonna eat that one i want the bacon I don't blame you. Mm. christmas time is right around the corner and once again you have to find a gift for that hard to buy for a family member on your list at timfarmerscountrykitchen.com this problem is solved that's timfarmerscountrykitchen.com.